Greetings, it is Maxo Diddley here, and today I'm here for another computer science video to help you get that A in your exam. And today we're here with binary searching. So if you want to see a coded example, be sure to click the eye up there for a Java and Visual Basic example. So let's get right into the video. What is a binary search? A binary search is a search on sorted data that occurs by repeatedly dividing the search interval in half. You begin with an interval covering the whole array. If the value of the search key is less than the item in the middle of the interval, narrow the interval to the lower half. If the item in the middle is less than the search key, then obviously we set the interval to the higher half. So that seems like complete gibberish, and by the way, the word interval means what is between two points or values. So I'm going to give you a couple of worked examples on how we do a binary search because that's how you gain an understanding, not listening to some complete definition full of complete computer science and mathematical jargon. So let's get right into it. We have an array here with nine values, therefore the indexes shall be from zero to eight. And this data is sorted because a binary search needs sorted data. So here are a couple of variables we, we need. Firstly, a midpoint, which will tell you how to calculate in a moment. We also have a leftmost value and a rightmost value. At the start, they're just going to be set to the minimum index and the maximum index of this array. But basically, these values will indicate where the interval is. The leftmost value is just going to be, okay, anything after the left we don't give one about. We're not going to bother searching. And anything to the right of the rightmost value we're not going to bother caring about either. So basically, the left and right variables are just going to indicate where in the array we actually want to search because the rest of the array is irrelevant. But to start with, they're set to the left and right of this array. So we have a midpoint. How do we calculate a midpoint? Well, basically, we get the rightmost value that we give one about and the leftmost value that we give one about using the right and left variables we literally just mentioned which in this case would be 8 and 0 respectively. So we get 8 plus 0 over 2, and that is equal to 4. So we get the rightmost value, add the leftmost value to that, then divide by 2, and that gives us the midpoint, which is 4. So whatever value is in the index of 4 is going to be our midpoint value. So now we have to compare our search term to the midpoint. Is the search term equal to the midpoint? If it is, we found the value, we can stop. But 33 isn't equal to 55, so we have to continue. Now we check if 33 is less than 55. Indeed it is, so there's a check. Based on this, we now know that 33 must lie in the first half of this array. So we can forget about 55 and beyond, because we know 33 will not lie there, because this is all sorted. So, anything from the index of 4 and beyond is completely useless. So we set the right value now to whatever the midpoint is, minus 1. So in this case it would be 4 minus 1, which is equal to 3. So now our new range for this array shall be the index of 0 to the index of 3, because everything else we know won't contain 33, because this is sorted data and basic maths would suggest 33 is less than 55. So, now with this new part of the array that we care about, or the new interval, we only have four values, from the index of 0 to 3. We need a new midpoint, so we get the rightmost value that we care about, which is 3. We add it to the leftmost value that we care about, which is 0. We divide it by 2, which gives us 1.5. Now, before you say, but Max, we can't have a decimal index, that's impossible, and you're correct. But, this is integer division. So, we just cut off the decimal point. So, we just have 1 instead of 1.5. So, the midpoint is 1, and therefore, the midpoint value will be 22. Now, we're going to compare 33 to 22. 33 isn't equal to 22. 33 isn't smaller than 22, but 33 is greater than 22. By that logic, anything below 22 is useless, because we know 33 can't exist there. So, Anything from the index of 1 or below is completely useless to us. So, our new leftmost value that we care about shall be equal to the midpoint plus 1. So in this case, it's going to be 1 plus 1, which equals 2. So the leftmost value that we care about is going to be 2. 
So, this leads us to a new little segment of our array that we actually give one about. And by the way, the rightmost value won't change because the maths we just determined does not affect the rightmost value at all. Now, we have a new section to this array that we care about, or we'd like to call it an interval. So, it's just got two values, the index of 2 and the index of 3. We have to calculate the midpoint again, which shall be equal to 3 plus 2 over 2. Because to get the rightmost value, index added to the leftmost value index, then divide by 2. So we get 5 divided by 2, which is equal to 2.5, but since this is integer division, we cut off the decimal point and we're left with a 2. So the midpoint is the index of 2. 33 is equal to 33. So we have a match. Woo! So guys, I hope that helps explain what a binary search is, but before we go, I'm going to give you one more example because I'm a nice guy. So, let's go into another example. So, we have the same array again, but this time we're going to find the value 80 and check if it's in the array. We're going to get the midpoint again, which will be 8 plus 0 divided by 2, which is equal to 4. So the midpoint is going to be 55 again, because this is the same array. So, 80 is not equal to 55. 80 is not less than 55. However, 80 is greater than 55. So we now know that the second half of the array would be the part of the array that contains 80 if it exists. So, the leftmost interval becomes uh, the midpoint plus 1, which is equal to 5. Therefore, the interval range shall now be from the index of 5 to the index of 8. Obviously, we explained why this occurs before. So, we now only have four indexes, or four elements, that we actually give one about ranging from 5 to 8. We have to get the midpoint again, which is equal to 8 plus 5 over 2, because we get the rightmost value, the leftmost value, and 2, because we divide everything by 2. This is equal to 6.5, however, due to integer division, becomes 6. So, the midpoint is going to be equal to 77, because that's in the index of 6. 80 is not 77. 80 isn't smaller than 77, 80 is greater than 77. So we know that any anything below 77 can't contain 80, because obviously 80 comes after 77, because of common sense. So the leftmost value shall become whatever the midpoint is, plus 1. So the leftmost value now shall be the index of 7, because 6 plus 1 is 7. So, we already have two values now that we actually give one about, 88 and 99, in the indexes of 7 and 8. We need, we need to calculate a new midpoint, which is equal to 8 plus 7 over 2, because obviously the rightmost value plus the leftmost value over 2. This is equal to 7.5, which becomes 7 due to integer division. The midpoint is 88, because that's in the index of 7. 88 does not equal 80. 80 is less than 88. Since 80 is less than 88, we have to do what we would normally do. And that is subtract 1 from the midpoint to get the new rightmost value. So 7 minus 1 equals 6. 7 is the midpoint and we minus 1 because that's what we do when the value we're searching for is less than the midpoint. So we have an index of 6. And you might be like, wait, Max. The rightmost value is now to the left of the leftmost value because the leftmost value is still 7. And you would be correct. And in this case, we stop the binary search. Because with binary searching, if we don't find a value, eventually the leftmost value becomes bigger than the rightmost value. Therefore, the right and left are swapped in a way in terms of which one's right and which one's left. And in that case, we will end up terminating the binary search and returning a not found. Because assuming the data is in the right order, which it should be, we have actually searched through the whole array in a binary search manner, and therefore the value can't exist. So, in this case, we return a false because 80 was not found. So guys, I hope that helped you. I gave you an example of if, if we find a value and if we don't find a value. Hopefully this helps clear everything up with binary searching. Like I said before, click the eye up there if you want to see a coded example for Java or Visual Basic. Anyway guys, thanks for being a great audience, and uh, if you've got any questions, be sure to leave a comment. If you want to see more, be sure to subscribe. Thanks for being a great audience, we'll see you next time.